All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, let me say at the outset, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking an interest in this particular topic. We live in an amazing time. We live in a time wherein the fabulous Cold War Pioneer Memorial is going to be restored. And, yeah! And nearby, the Fort War Pioneer Memorial is going to be maintained and retained, God willing. Um, and we'll get some press, and we'll get its due, its right and due, because it's important, it's, it's magnificent. Um, geez, how should we start? Well, let me, let me say also at the outset, we're going to see a lot of maps and a lot of very similar photos. I'm going to have to sort of drill this stuff in here again and again and again about the lost and, 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 and vanished topography of Old Fort War, because unlike my beloved Bunker Hill, whose topography is basically the same, but not altogether, I mean, Fort War has, has been basically completely erased. And so it's tough to actually walk down there and look up in the sky and get an idea as to where Fort Worth Place and California Street and Sand Street were the same and blah, blah, blah. Where they all were. So, let's begin. It's fine. Ah! Well done! So here we are. Here we are, all of us in the plaza, looking up at this hill. This sort of nameless hill, that is the story. So it's 1846, and you all really heard about the Mexican American War, the reason we all heard about it. And this guy, Commodore Stockton, he cruises into Los Angeles, and he takes LA, basically. And he leaves a guy in charge, his name is Gillespie. And Gillespie has had no experience with this sort of thing. He's got a bunch of, he's got like 50 Marines that are going to take care of in Los Angeles. They've got no experience with this sort of thing. They're kind of dicks, and to use a military term, right? Yes, Shmuel gets it. And uh, so there's a revolt, there's an uprising, and Gillespie flees. He doesn't flee as much as he's gently escorted out of Los Angeles. So Commodore Stockton has to come back to LA and retake LA, and Kearney, so you all know the from San Francisco, you know Kearney, you know Stockton, you know Fremont, these are all those characters. He's got a topographical engineer by the name of Emery. And Emery's told basically, like, we need a defensible breastwork somewhere up here so we can fire cannons down on the miscreants if need be. So he builds it. Now, right about this time, there's some Mormons. They're out in the Midwest. And they go to James Knox Polk, our president, our greatest president. That is true. I mean, he made the tariffs fall. He made the English sell the Oregon Territory, he built an independent treasury, and he took the Southwest for us, right? And the Mormons go up to Polk and they say, yo, James Knox, why are you beating up on us Mormons? And he says, well, I won't anymore, but I got an idea. Why don't you form a Mormon battalion and go help seize the Southwest from Mexico? And they say, yeah, right. So they march from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, all the way to San Diego, to this date, still the longest march in U.S. military history. And then they, they march from San Diego up to L.A., and they start building this, uh, building upon topographical engineer Emory's previous breastwork with these wonderful embrasures, and embrasures, something you find in a, something you find in a, uh, you know, any type of crenellated parapet where you might have some place to shoot at a cannon. And, uh, and so the Mormons build it along with the first uh, the U.S. Dragoons, although there's some dispute as to how much the Dragoons actually were involved. And they name it after Benjamin D. Moore, who had fallen in the, uh, the very sanguinary Battle of San Pasqual in 1846. Now, as such, and, and, but then something happens. So they're, they're cruising along, they're building this, and all the Mormons, this is in uh, April of 47, uh, well, they started in January 47, they were doing it all through the spring, and then they muster out in late 47. Plus, as you know, there had been the Treaty of Coquimba, which ended uh, Mexican-American uh, warfare in Southern California, in the Alta California part, except for the fact that the government of Mexico had raised $600,000, which was a lot of money back then, for the retaking of Mexico. So they still started working on this, but after, of course, the Treaty of Guadalupe had 
Chicago, it basically, it, it, it's never quite finished. It's never quite the garrison it was meant to be, but it's super important because on July 4th, 1847, they raised the American flag right there on a very, on a specially built 150 foot flagpole right up there. Huge day for Los Angeles. It's the day that Los Angeles becomes an American city. And it happened right there. Uh, slide. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Everyone, give Donna a hand. Yeah! Your tax dollars at work. Anyway, so to give you an idea, is what we're talking about. There's the plaza. And there's Spring Street running along here, and this, of course, is New High Street, which no longer exists. And Broadway running right along there, it doesn't cut across here, there's Broadway. And there's Hill Street, which ends at Temple. And here is our little breastwork and our garrison you know, firing down upon the miscreants. Um, it's decommissioned in 1853. And say what you will about Los Angeles and its Kleenex history, but even in 1883 we had a historical society, and the historical society pressed to have this retained and maintained, uh, and they went up to the uh, city and the mayor and the city council and the board of supervisors and said, let's make this a historic monument. And, they, and the city, in their wisdom, said, well, we've got a better idea. Now, I know this is crazy, it would never happen today, but the city said, we've got these developers, and we're in their pocket, and so they sold us for a couple hundred bucks, and uh, to the developers, and the developers within like three weeks had sold just a couple of the uh, subdivided plots for $15,000, which is roughly akin to like if the city gave like a few acres in South Park uh, for $300,000, and then the developers said thank you and turned around and sold a couple of plots for $15 million, which would never happen today. So there you go. The more things change, right? All right, uh, slide. Right, so I need to give you an idea as to what we're talking about. This lost hill. Some of the parts that are still going to Temple and Broadway still exist, but there was a big, uh, there's a tunnel here, and Broadway ran up here, or 4th Street. Here's Buena Vista, we're going to talk a lot about that. Here's Hill Street, it comes along here. This is all cemetery over the Grand, so Grand. California, Buena Vista, this whole area, that's what we'll be talking about. Now remember our cemetery, slide, is still a cemetery. It just becomes a playground. So that's, that's why in the, in the write-up for this I said it was going to involve, you know, spooky cemeteries and teenage girls. So there are teenage girls involved. Along with, you know, slee stack, as you'll see. And anything involving teenage girls and slee stack, right? Acquitted. Anyway. So, and you're, and you're gonna see a bunch of maps, they're gonna have a bunch of changing names. This is gonna be Castellar, this is gonna be Sand Street, this is gonna be Rock Street, but basically like, burn this image into your mind. All right, next. So, I'm doing it again, I'm gonna show you what we're talking about. So, when you see it, there are a lot of images that were taken from after the courthouse was built on Pound Cake Hill, everyone started going camera nutty and taking photos all over the place. So here's, here's the typical one, this is looking up Broadway, which ends here at, uh, at uh, California Street, and then this is sort of a very typical shot near the Hancock Family House at Fort Moore Place and Broadway, and then there's three, there's two houses behind that, there's Harry Chandler's house, we're gonna talk about all these places. Um, B.F. Hilliker. Uh, so this is sort of your classic shot of the wonderful homes that were built up here, not counting the ones over here on Buena Vista. And of course, right along here on the Hill Street, that's the school that gets put. This is an old cemetery still. And there is your uh, Central High School. So again, this big area is the cemetery, school, school, here's where the tunnel starts. And sunsets back here and doubles it. Justicia, again, things change. Justicia, also known as Buena Vista. Slide. I just can't get enough of maps. I'm a map guy. So again, Hill, Rock Street, these are all the important, these are the plots that were sold after the city had developers uh, invented them, figuratively. Literally. Uh, so we can't really read this, but this says Wills. This is where the Wills mansion goes. Felipe, Jacob Felipe, our first brewer, builds the famous 
famous brew house that becomes the Mary Bannon residence. Felipe uh, is this, he builds the first uh, you know, big uh, residential structure up on there. This is where the uh, Hancock Bannon House, which is really the George S. Patton House. Uh, and Buena Vista, we're going to talk about now. Slide. Oh, go back. And important too are the early, early adobes that get torn down by the city, live down in this area. The famous Jesus Monzo adobe, uh, which lasted all the way into the 40s. That's right there. Okay, now we go for it. Can everyone hear me? Yes. All right. I'm going to talk louder now to be more annoying. So, here's an early shot. Looking at from where Hill Street ends at Temple and then begins again. So it's just hill going up into nothingness. This all becomes the cemetery. This, of course, is uh, Jacob Felipe's beer hall, where it's famously said people would walk up the hill and then roll back down. And this, of course, is uh, 413415 North Broadway, the first large residence built at the top, which was, of course, built by Jacob Felipe, who built. That. So that actually faces on the Broadway. Broadway's going to run along the top this way, and right in front of the beer hall, the street going this way. Okay. Are you getting a feel for this promontory? Yes? Good. Fly. So here we go. So as you remember, it's Hill Street, and then uh, uh, Broadway, and then Buena Vista ran along the ridge, sort of above Spring. So here's a shot looking from Pound Cake Hill. So Pound Cake Hill, remember, if you're familiar with the uh, Clara Shortridge Fultz Criminal Justice Center, that's on Pound Cake Hill. It's not much of a hill anymore. But here we are standing on the hill from our back towards the Central High School, where it was originally looking down Buena Vista, along north along the length of Fort Moore uh, Hill. So you notice that this house is this house. So this faces a long way to Vista. And then when it turns on this way, this again is the aforementioned uh, 413, 415 North Broadway facing out, as built by Jacob Felipe. And these houses run along the way Vista. Uh, Andrew Lassell and Lassell Park fame. There, and I believe that was uh, the famous uh, uh, surgeon Big Bell, who was there before he moved one block over. And, oh, and uh, Right, first congregational next to the, is it the Blades Mansion? Anyway, this is where Helen Hunt Jackson came to Los Angeles. This is famously where she stayed right there. But I'm not germane to our topic. Next. So, again, Buena Vista running along the ridge here and looking at the same way. Now, no, 343 Buena Vista, which is right there, the two with this wonderful, what in the world is that? It's because they tore down that, they would build things like this. So, these are the back sides of the houses they face on the Broadway. So you get a feeling of how the hill slopes down, and then it juts off that way towards the Sunset Boulevard. Got it? Good. Another early shot, looking up towards, so, Colonel Jackson's cat is over there, Buena Vista's down, and sort of fort was developed. So this would have been a little early. Oh, things are out of order. You're all out of order. And then this is the end of, uh, no, this is, yeah, this is the end of Buena Vista coming up here, turning around that way, and there's uh, Jacob Felipe's beer hall. Uh, so you really get a feeling, so the plaza's down there, so you really get a feeling of how grand and, and airy this part of the world was. Next. Now remember, over the other side of Hill Street, was the cemetery. After the decommissioning of Fort Moore, you're probably wondering, where was this Fort Moore exactly? Well, I'll show you. It ran, so in these, 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 these earthen battlements, they ran like that, right along there, which is why this was called Fort Street. And the cemetery was here. Independent Order of Oddfellows, Free and Associated Masons, this is Firemen, and this is the Order Protestant Cemetery. At the time, of course, Protestants couldn't be buried in Catholic cemeteries, and so the Protestants said, what can we do? They opened this up in uh, 1853. By 1869, I believe, it skipped with the city. By 1879, it's basically abandoned. Except there are images of stones in there that date all the way up into the late 1880s. My guess is the city will probably abandon this part. The 1880s stones must be in one of these two first. When you're a member of a fraternity, uh, one of the nice things they do for you is they bury you. It means you're not going to die indigent. So, someday you can all come to my Masonic funeral. 
Yes. Not if we die together. <laughs> Rich and I have a suicide pact, but that's another thing. Wait, is that tomorrow? Anyway, uh, so, so these are some of these blocks. Uh, so this is sort of the heart of uh, old uh, Fort Lord of Agents. Um, you're going to hear a lot about the two helicopters, the Baker, the Wills, the Hancock Banning, aka George's Pat. So, Milo Baker's here, head of the Baker Ironworks. Uh, E.P. Hilliker, B.F. Hilliker, um, Big Mill, uh, George Patton, Father. Because I don't like sports. <laughs> so the part of my brain that would be filled with sports is just filled with all this other stuff. I don't know. Uh, the beer halls here, and the, Will, the Wills Mansion, arguably like the greatest of all the mansions ever built in Los Angeles, right there. Okay. So, Temple Fort, if you're familiar with the, the WCTU building, that's right there. Radio station WCT. Women's Christians Temple Union. They built a, a big temple right here, a big sort of vaguely Romanesque revival pile uh, that had water fountains on it. And so the idea being that when drunks like me would be wandering around, and they'd go to the WCTU and they'd say, oh look, a water fountain. <laughs> I will have that instead of whiskey. Well, it works fine. Yes. If anyone has a liver, give it to me. Next. Oh, so, talk about the cemetery. That's right. So, here are some uh, shots that you've probably never seen before, because no one has, of the cemetery. Uh, back there, uh, you'll notice. So, of course, I'm talking about the cemetery in the 1850s. Once the school is built in 1890, these are the towers of the high school. And we're back of it. Next. Another cemetery shot just for your edification and delectation. Next. And the old Protestant cemetery. Ah, I love this. Oh, next. Where did you get those? I ain't saying. <laughs> They'll all be in the book. And then you'll find out. You can flip to the back. Uh, so, so, so the cemetery falls into like terrific and terrible uh, disrepair. Uh, this is the tomb of a man named Robert Carlyle. Carlyle was a was a big man back in the day. Mayor Harper um, remembered Carlyle when Harper was a boy and said like Harper was a was a big deal. He gets shot down outside the Bella Union Hotel, and the rumor was that he had gold teeth. So they they break into the tomb and they steal his face. How many people have seen my favorite film, Duchess in the Dirt Water Fox, with Ryan and Ryan. Duchess in the Dirt Water Fox, you've got the Jewish wedding in the western town in Colorado. Robert Carlyle was at a Jewish wedding at, at the hotel on, a, on, on what is now Alvarez Street. And in the middle of this Jewish wedding, they have a giant gunfight and he's shot down. So just whenever you think of Robert Carlyle, think of my favorite Goldie Hawn film, Duchess in the Dirt Water Fox, in the Jewish wedding. Oh, you all. So, so they, they yeah, they, they, they start uh, taking bodies out of the cemetery, but they've only taken out um, a little bit. The remaining four and a half acres, all the bodies are still there. This is your classic, you know, shake up by Mayor Harper's Hotel and say, like, you only move the headstones, you never move the bodies. Uh, the tomb is popular. There's some young, you know, Hispanic lads saying, what fun. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. Again, acquitted. Cemetery rooms. It's, oh, speaking of which, next. So, so the high school gets put on the other side of the cemetery, on top of some of the cemetery, and all the high school girls like to do their gymnastics there. And they're vaulting over tombstones and stuff like that. So the uh, the super uh, the, the super of the place, the caretaker, the spooky old caretaker, um, makes a big stink. And Mayor Harper says, No, no, no. There's nothing I like more than teenage girls jumping over headstones. We don't have mayors like that anymore. I'll tell you. Uh, so he basically, he, he writes an actual city edict that says that, like, if you're a high school girl, you get to do whatever you want, run and jump over headstones, which remains to this day. So, tell your daughters, go to the cemetery, jump around, and when somebody at the cemetery says something, you go, uh-uh. I have a mayoral declaration. So, they're hard to the rescue. You just picture them leaping over. Okay, next. So, let's talk about High schools, we're talking about high schools. So this is the aforementioned uh, Pound Peak Hill, uh, which now the Clara Short Bridge, Fultz Short, Short Bridge Faults. Clara Short, 
short period, halts. Criminal Justice Center sits right there, so as you know, not much of a hill left there anymore, is there? And so it's up here on the hill, and the uh, county and the city, they're eyeing it, they're like, you know, we really want to put a uh, courthouse, especially another big, fat, Richardsonian, Romanesque, rough-hewn stone, ashlar stones with lots of, you know, rounded arches, booming steel, as it's known. Uh, get this the hell off our hill. And so a guy named Linnell goes to the city and says, I'm an engineer, I can move it for you. So, what happens? <laughs> they pick it up and move it. They get it off of Pound Cake Hill, it gets to about there, and he realizes, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I can only do about this much before I realize, like, I can't get it the hell up, like, on to Fort Wayne. So it sits there, and weeks on end, they, they dig a little, yeah, there's a little hole right there for like, little trolleys to go through and stuff like that. Um, but, another engineer goes to the city and says, I can figure this out. It was basically done, they would build this structure, and then they would build another structure in front of it, and they would put a bunch of, you know, shit, a lot of ships, a lot of ropes, a lot of pulleys, a lot of manpower, and they would just move it like an inch at a day until it was finally up there. A little more than that. Okay, next. And that's why we have the uh, high school on Fort Moore Hill. Again, California Street, Hill Street, Sand Street, so there's a Sand Street school, it comes California Street, runs along here, and this is Hill Street. And they plop it down over there, it's all cemetery, and then they plop this on top of it, which I think will... Oh, and this is the aforementioned WCTU! And it's Christian Serpent Okay, so if you're, is anyone familiar with the, the, the big uh, 1958 heating and ventilation plant that's down there? You see the steam coming out of it right there on that one? That's here. We're going to get a tour of that. Not today. Next. Oh, oh, and I threw this in the last one. I like this. So there's the story goes. The 30th of December, 1882, Mayor Toberman famously electrifies Los Angeles. The first electric lights are turned, he flips the switch and he turns them on, there's a big mast at like Maine and Commercial, there's another one at First and Hill, and turns on the first electric lights in downtown LA. But, long before that happened, the electric lights were turned on on Fort Moore. Don't forget that, Fort Moore is first. Electricity, and here it is. So kooky kids, young America, to turn it on furnishing the city with electric light. And they turned on, you know, one candle power lantern. Remember, it happened here first. <laughs> so, we're gonna, so we're jumping back and forth a little bit because it's like semi-topical, semi-chronological. What are you gonna do? The famous Buena Vista, the new and attractive Fort Hill Resort. Um, perfect order and the exclusion of improper characters guaranteed. <laughs> um, I know, I've thrown out 10 times. Um, so Jacob Felipe, he builds this up at that, that sort of top of the promontory. Um, and in very short order, um, Mary Banning, widow of Phineas Banning, and her two daughters, Mary Junior. You see Junior for a moment? That is not. Yeah. Mary the Younger and uh, Lucy Banning move in, cut this up to a fabulous house. This is a shot of it in about 1906 when it was a fabulous house of the Banning ladies. Uh, they moved in in about 86, so it's only a year off about three years, because guess what? Felipe, not terribly good in keeping out the reprobates. No, it became a, a, a haven of uh, ill-bred and ill-mannered young men rolling down the hill. Next. So to give you an idea, because I love giving ideas, as to where we are. So here again, you've seen this photo before at the top of the hill, and there it is in about, I'd say, 1940. So after the demolition, jumping ahead a little bit, and so after the demolition of this part of the hill where the Wills Mansion was, but you still have Milo Baker, E.P. Hillifer, uh, George S. Patton slash Hancock Banning, Harry Chandler, ooh, uh, and the great um, B.F. Uh, Hilliker, Benjamin Hilliker awarded the Medal of Valor for, he's like nine years old, he's with a Fife and Drum Corps. It's Vicksburg. I don't have to explain what Vicksburg is, I hope. And they're just getting slaughtered, and nine-year-old Benjamin Hilliker 
like throws down his little drone and picks up a rifle from the dead guy and just charges the enemy, goes nuts, starts killing him left and right, gets shot in the head, is left for dead, wakes up in the like in the mound of dead in Pittsburgh like two days later, gets up and says, I'm nine years old, nothing could kill me. And he like marched back to his unit, gets the Medal of Valor, settles in Los Angeles like any good, you know, Civil War vet would, kills that house. Anyway, so again, this is there. Getting it? There you go. Sunset. And the, and the federal courthouse, the 1938 Gilbert Stanley Underwood, well, I would think they know the Hall of Justice. And there's the federal courthouse. And remember, they were going to build a courthouse. They started tearing up all this because they were going to build a courthouse right there, which is actually this Stanley Moss. That's all another and then right here is where the tunnel is going to be. So this is Broadway, Fort Worth Place, Hill Street. Buena Vista, which you saw earlier, with like the glass cell house and all that stuff, and all those little, that ran right along there. So you can start to see it's starting to get chewed away early. Okay, next. So let's look at some of these houses. This is, I don't even get me started, that's so great. I, 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 killing myself the last two weeks trying to figure out who the architect was, but we'll get there. Um, so they take possession in September of 1886. Uh, Dr. John Wills and his wife Charlotte, and uh, William Lemoyne Wills was also a doctor. They're big mockers down here for a long time. And here they are out on their porch. But you get a feeling for, so this is Broadway running along here, and this is their view. Like, there's, there's nothing out there for us, but I'm sure. Once the orphan asylum is built here, you can probably have a great view of it on a clear day. Next. Oh, and the reason that was 501 North Buena Vista is because they are actually on like almost two acres. So Buena Vista was their address, but it actually faced onto Broadway. They had an acre of lawn going down to Buena Vista. Milo Baker, Joseph Catherine Newsom, or Newsom, early enough to be the Newsom brothers, who, if you're familiar with like, is it like the Carroll House, I mean, had, this has all the great newsome you know, this sort of open work porch and all this variegated shingle and stuff like that. They built a lot of the really amazing uh, houses up on Bunker Hill, if you're familiar with the famous Bradbury Mansion, uh, the Hildreth, um, the E.P. Bryant Mansion, uh, which is a little less well known. So, great mansion builders at the time. Milo Baker, head of the Baker Brown Works. This is just across the street from the Wills Mansion. Next. Oh. And uh, so I was looking at a picture, I was going to show this picture, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, people are going to wonder what that is. So that's this wonderful examiner image that was right over the Broadway tunnel. Amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, next. So here's giving you an idea is after their lawn is grown in and they planted some stuff, looking this way down the Wills Mansion, you're looking down Broadway that way at the Milo Baker. Again, here's another shot. So the Wills Mansion. Milo Baker, so this is sort of the part of Lindsay, fancy schmancy, Fort uh, Ward, which sweeps down here to Spring Street, and then that is, there's the tunnel, and this of course is where, we're like, where's that big Richard Sony Romanesque school? Uh -huh. We'll get to that. Next. This should not mean Hancock Banning. Uh, Hancock Banning, it's generally known as the Hancock Banning Mansion because he was most famous for living there. It's usually referred to uh, as the Hancock Banning. It's built by George S. Hatton, whose father was George S. Hatton, Colonel, uh, Confederate Army, and whose son was George S. Patton, Commander, United States Army. Look who's here! Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, Gordon Madison, first son of Bunker Hill. We have, to, we have like 10 minutes, I'm told. I know. I'm just gonna dance for that entire time. Okay, let's go. We're gonna rock it with this stuff. Thank you again. There's the E.P. Hilliker. Next. Harry Chandler's pad. So when you're, when you're looking down again, as we always do, down here at the corner of Fort Moore and, uh, uh, and Broadway, there's the Hilliker pad, there's the steps right there. Uh, there's the Chandler family looking awesome. Next. Uh, Mary Banning's carriage house. Interestingly, this was designed by Carol H. Brown. I know, amazing. And then Richard Sonia Romy did like the uh, Stimson building. Next. The adobes of Fort Moore building and Jesus Alonzo's adobe before mentioned. Next. Uh, Jasper 
Jacqueline and Preston. If you've ever been to the, was it the Coconino County Courthouse in New Mexico? It looks exactly like this. He did this a year later. This one's better. Um, that's built on the cemetery. Next. Uh, Bleasner and Bradbeer. Bradbeer Festival is Bradbeer and Ferris. Uh, this is really amazing. You always see this here, you always wonder what it is. This is actually the front this way, but then it goes all the way that, like so, in mission style. Next. See how quickly I'm going through this? I know, it's proud of me. I've learned. Because it'll cut me off. You don't want to miss that. Bang over finish. Uh, the interior in courtyard thereof. You can see the, the high school poking up in the, across the street. Next. And then, you always see this building plopped on next to it. People always wonder what it is, so there's a close about it. This is this. This is this annex, which is by Denison Farwell. Super important, super great. Next, oh wait, there's a good, uh, good close about it in the next slide. Boom. Next. This is their science building, which is the biggest, baddest, most amazing building ever built. Um, with, with, look, a zoological laboratory. And who doesn't want one of those? Next. Here's the raising of uh, the flag on that famous 100 foot flagpole. This is right over the Broadway tunnel. Next. Maybe we are cutting off some of the bottom of this. Um, so here there, this is of course that, that funny building you always see on the other side of the uh, Broadway tunnel, which is replaced by the Alhambra Annex. Um, this is Colonel E.A. Sherman, um, who, you know, fought the Californians in the Great Mexican War um, and is the head of the Spanish War veterans. This is James Miller Gwynn who is the still the greatest uh, uh, and seminal uh, chronicler of early California and early Los Angeles. Jane Gwynn's book on early LA is elementary. All right, next. Now, the one that, that was the one firing a cannon off the top of uh, the tunnel, because you could just fire cannons. That's not the city fire cannons anymore. Come on. So then, Fort Moore is going to become, like, the, the greatest, uh, this is going to be like a convention center for 100,000 people with a giant dome. There's going to be a giant waterfall. Believe it or not, a waterfall down this side of Fort Moore. Crazy. In 1911. Uh, but it never comes to pass. It's because Charles Mulford Robinson uh, told the city, hey, city beautiful. Put a big dome up there. And they said, okay. Well, that never happened. Uh, never in Skilling. Never in Skilling, fresh off the auditorium hotel at Fifth and Olive. Next. This. County, anybody? No one knows? Disappeared awesome plaque put there by the DAR in 1916. Next. That was actually on the, that was in the front yard of the Benjamin Hilliker, aforementioned Medal of Valor, 9 year So the Broadway Tunnel comes in in 1901. Before, after. Huh? See? There's all sorts of other cute little differences. You start to see, like, you know, other important buildings being built and stuff like that. So it's starting to get built up. So it's starting to get into sort of much like Bunker Hill. It becomes, you know, the, the rich start moving out in their inexorable march to the sea. And, uh, and a lot of these things have been with apartments. Next. Nice shot of the Broadway tunnel after they put up these wonderful stairs here. That's what they were shooting the can off of. There's the famous flagpole. Next. I was going to mention how they moved from Hambro 120 feet that way so they could fit the uh, Hall of Justice here. But, Fort Moore, there it is. And, and again, the same thing happened with Bunker Hill that the, the tunnels sort of gave a, a feeling of isolation to these places because, you know, cars were driving through the green were just driving under them. And so they, became, so they became even more wonderful and quiet. Next. Uh, looking off the back of the Hill Street Tunnel, so this is how it looks like looking at the old, I don't want to point out, that's the second uh, tunnel that they wore. The Broadway tunnels over this way. Second tunnel people always forget about. This was a trolley tunnel that shot up on the sunset. Next. Oh, right, now I was just sort of showing you the... I think we have about 670 slides left. And I've got, what, three minutes? So here we go. You always do this to me. Or I do it for myself. I don't know. Um, that makes me the toughest. Or am I just, I, I get this, you spill the soup, I get the soup spilled on me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Wills House, this is 1930. Uh, the Wills House has got to go. There's poor Fanny Wills. Um, you see, you know, to go into Musical's home is like stepping back half a century. Oh, what I wouldn't give. 
Uh, although the, the, the Milo Baker House, the Newsom House, apparently was most famous for its paintings of wildflower poppies and its dining room. And the, thank you. And remember, you can't hear me. Just, yeah. Um, next. Oh, and then it's the depression. There's not much going on. So this is your radio X-ray device. And briefly, G. Warren Schufeld says, "Well, you see, me and these other guys, McCreary and Martin, we're hanging out with this hokey uh, medicine man. Although his name is like Leonard Macklin, but that's not important." Uh, and the Hopi medicine man, a.k.a. Chief Little Greenleaf, says, yeah, 5,000 years ago, the place was full of lizard people, and all these catacombs in the ground, and they used to dig these catacombs using special chemicals, and those, they went all the way to the sea, and so the, the ocean water would clean out and stuff like that, but now they're abandoned because there's some sort of, you know, fire from the sky. Oh, the fire from the sky is why they lived underground anyway. But the entire history of how we became a people a species is written on gold tablets. He's, all these 500 pound gold tablets. So everybody with gold money and started digging up for more next. That's right. An actual image of actual lizard people actually at work. Sort of. And so this is the old uh, Mary Banning place, he came over here garden and they're digging in the backyard. And so here's the old wheels place, all the old water runs that way. Uh, and they, they went gold nutty. And then the, about halfway through 1934, the story changes, and it's like, well, it's not really lizard gold, it's the Spanish gold. But uh, it's still not a family again. Or did they? Maybe that's why the city tore into the hill with such fervor. So they're looking for lizard gold. <laughs> There's lots of it. Next. Oh, right. Just to give you a, a sense of how gold nutty they were. Looking for the catacombs. What intense? Okay, let's go. So, there they are speaking. You would think that the groundbreaking for Union Station was actually out in the Crickville, where, where, where Chinatown was. But the groundbreaking was actually nowhere near Union Station. The groundbreaking was here. This is where they started digging up four more. They needed 50,000 cubic yards of earth for fill to fill in where they dug out Chinatown so that they could build Union Station. So, groundbreaking was actually there. There's the end of the Broadway Tunnel. There's the dating pad. Next. And they start rolling through. So there's, this is where, again, where the Buena Vista, where Buena Vista used to run. And there's the backs of the house, the front on Broadway up there. And they're just, they're mowing it down. Next. The Los Angeles High School, of course, it loses its tower after the 33rd quake. In 1936, it's demolished, along with the annex and the science uh, building. Next. And. So this is 19, uh, 1940, this house is still here. This is the 1936 H.C. Zimmerman Mediterranean Revival uh, School Complex. It's magnificent, it lasts all the way to 2002. Note that the uh, cemetery is going to come a blighted hellscape. Um, and they never moved the bodies, which they found out when they built the new high school, but we'll get into that. Right. And the freeway, because the freeway's coming. All these houses get demolished in mid-1941. And the freeway is going to come through. But something happened in December of 41. I don't know. There's a people. And when they came back, think about it. The freeway that would have gone through would have looked a lot more like the Royal Seagull Parkway. Yeah. But because of damn World War II, which besides killing 100 million people, was also sucked. Because we could have had a really cute little freeway. But then, after World War II, they knew so much about destruction. That's another topic. Let's move on. I get excited. Uh, right, so. Uh, 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 uh. So here's this. Now look at this. Okay, no. One more. So I think we got a nice. Again, here's. Exit of the Broadway Tunnel. Broadway Tunnel. Spanish School. And look, right here. The 1941 demolitions have happened. The Wills House was gone in 1930, but all these guys, all the ones we were looking at, were all torn down in 1941. Next. Because the freeway's coming through, it's gonna slice off half of that Spanish school building. And the wonderful 1873 Kaiser design uh, schoolhouse is in its way. Next. So they, they, people get excited, they fight for its attention. It's, it's their more brand and important building, with the possible exception of St. Viviana's, which they also tried to tear down. But they tore it down. Next. Then it's time to get to work on the tunnel. Next. 
and Fort Worth itself. So you're walking along, let's say you want to, you want to just go to your booth in Alhambra. You're walking along the sidewalk, and then all of a sudden, whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, it's all gone. The hill's gone. Next. So that, that, that was Broadway, and that was like ground zero for all of the great uh, Fort Worth mansions. Next. And again, they're putting in the freeway there, and what are they finding? This poor guy. Consecrated ground. His bones are sticking out, and they got, well, basically me uh, playing with them. Okay, next. The last holdout, of course, is Gary Banning's pad, all the way to 1949. It's a stalwart survivor. Um, it had been cut for apartments at that point, but uh, it fell to the wrecking ball. Next. And it gives you an idea as to how they're starting to cut down the top of the hill, like from the top of that tree. And here's the exit to the Broadway Tunnel, and it's completely gone. Next. This is, yeah, so this is instructive. So, Hill Street ran straight that way, and Broadway ran straight that way, and now that's all cut out and bent, and this is all completely flat. Remember, the hill went all the way up like that, all the way down here to Spring Street, and the freeway is going to come straight through here. Next. And it did. You sort of cut off half that. And right here is the Lock Colima building we're going to talk about in a minute. Next. Right, this is very instructive. Yeah, the lot that just chops it right off. All these homes now secure, including all the homes up there for this. And it's just completely demolished. And in the back there, they're building this. Uh, Sort of Lake Madere, wonderful AC Zimmerman, you can design this uh, Board of Education building. I got three minutes. Good name. Next. We're all the way up to 1950, there can't be much left. Uh, and they, they, here's some shots of that uh, Board of Education building, which was just sublime. Spanish on the outside. Spanish on the outside. Streamline on the inside. I know. <laughs> Including the old Broadway tunnel, which was still totally this end. They used it for storage. And we think, uh, well, we'll talk about that when we get out there. Next. So here's, I mean, oh! Oh, this makes me crazy. I love it so much. You know, these, these ribbon windows, these little pylons with the corner. Oh my god. It's Lake Modern, a go go. Um, Ace is ever in 1950. Next. So, if you, so a lot of you probably remember that, because that was right at like Sunset and Brand. Remember? No. Crickets. So it's July, 1953. We're getting to the meat of the thing. We've only got about an hour to live. Um, you all recognize, obviously, uh, John Anson Ford, obviously, Ernest Debs. Um, this is Lucy Davis. She is a, uh, her descendant was one of these pioneer Mormons, and it was her idea to come up with this memorial. Everybody recognize? It's Eugene Biscuit Lewis. Yeah, yeah, that was Biscuit. Uh, okay, next. Any photo of Eugene Biscuit Lewis makes me smile. I don't know. That is one. Uh, and you will read everywhere that it's dedicated in 1957 or 1958. It's all wrong. It's dedicated on the 3rd of July, 1956. There they are, putting it together, looking awesome. Let's go. Next. Henry Christ, Gladys Bean, Albert Stewart. Uh, if you're familiar with the Millard Sheets Scottish Rite Temple on Wilshire, he did all the things inside. Adachi and Nagano, they do this. Next. They did the design the whole thing. Next. You're going to go and see it. But I wanted to show you some pictures of it. It's good glory days. Next. For example, this marvelous waterfall is going to be much a topic of discussion very soon. Next. There it is, waterfall against the way into wonder. Next. Next. Nice swanny shot. Here's that great uh, Board of Education building and the Spanish one. And I'll, I'll just give you an idea because it looks so much like those 19th century shots we saw and without you know, everything. Next. And again. All the way goes this way, he goes this way, it's just back and forth. Just like that. Just like that. So you can see how sort of you know, cozy it was back in the day before the, the Taj Mahoney was put in there and all that business. And there's our last remaining remnant of old Fort Moore. Until, and this shot's probably from about 
1980, uh, cars, but it's gone dry. Because back in 1977, we had a drought. And you're like, but we have a drought. It's like, don't get me started. Um, so it's turned off. You know, and so whither the poor first world memorial is got the attention of people with their, their waterfalls, but it was not to be, they, they turned it off. Next. And it was left to sit and rot. Oh, and then they started tearing everything down. And I had no idea, because it's 2000, like, come on, 2002, and I lived down there at the time, and they started tearing this down, and I'm like, I'm sorry, what? So they tear all this down, they tear down the 1936 Spanish slash Streamline Modern School. Next. To put in this. The Ramon Secretary School of Visual and Performing Arts. And it is goofy. Like, this was actually supposed to have a, an observation tower on top of it. And so finally, the architects in the city were like, we have no idea how to do that. But who's good when we drew it on a napkin? And so they built it anyway. It's like a little water slide. I don't know, one minute. It's like. So then when I was seven, the funny story. Sorry, that's me return crazy. Um, and of course, when they build this, they find what? Tons of pioneer bodies, like, all over the place, because they never moved them. About 80 of them. Okay, next. And then the last building was there. Next. There's Broadway Tunnel. And there it is with demo fencing. So this is the last remaining chunk of Old Fort Moore, and it's torn down about eight months ago, six months ago? Yeah. In July, yeah. Broke my, broke my never loving heart. Sort of got 1921 this was built. Um, and it's gone. Next. So, four more rotting away until one day all this started happening. And I said, what? There's talk of... Exactly. And that's why we're here today. So, we're going to go take a walk and we're going to see this and I want to thank you. <laughs>